Thanks, Adam. Um, so Ionic Rare Earths, we're developing a supply chain for magnet and heavy rare earths sourced from our Makudu Rare Earth project in Uganda. Um, the world's going to require a lot more magnet rare earths in a very, very short space of time. Um, the complete supply chain is driven by, uh, by China. All of the downstream processing capability for rare earths exists in China and the value addition of those refined rare earths into magnets. On the back of you know, substantial growth um, in the EV and wind sector, we see an opportunity to accelerate Makutu towards production um, and take the product into a, into a supply chain which we're evaluating in, uh, in Europe and the US. So that's supply chain sourced from the, the mine or the project at Makutu, which is a large ionic absorption clay deposit um, we just announced a substantial mineral resource estimate update uh, last week, a 70% increase in the overall size of the resource, which is likely to get larger with additional exploration. Um, we have uh, 300 square kilometres of mineral tenements um, at Makutu uh, that stretches across a 37 kilometre long mineralisation trend. So. Uh, beyond the, the massive resource that we've already announced, um, potential to, to get substantially larger with more work in the future. Um, we are working on a feasibility study at the moment. Um, that feasibility study will consider very simple modular development, uh, heap leach, where we uh, effectively wash the clay with salt solutions, which extracts the rare earths in a chemical form that we can precipitate as a mixed rare earth carbonate with no radionuclides. That product would be exported to a refinery. Uh, we're completing a location analysis at the moment, um, looking at a number of jurisdictions around the world with the ability to separate the, the mixed rare earth carbonate into the individual rare earth oxides that can then be used to make other value added metals, alloys, and ultimately magnets. So we are looking at that, that life cycle ownership and we're incorporating now magnet recycling into the, the, the suite of, of, of uh, initiatives the company is looking at. Um, the basket that's generated from the Makutu project is dominant in, in magnet and heavy rare earths. So when we look at the, the individual com component of the magnet rare earths, it makes up about 43% of our basket, which is uh, a market leading uh, proportion. And importantly, the, the, the magnet rare earths that go into the EVs, uh, neodymium, praseodymium, dysprosium and terbium, we roughly have that in the perfect ratio for the high intensity magnets that will be used in, in EVs going forward. Um, we also have what is now the second largest globally reported scandium resource. So in, in addition to, to focusing on, on the the magnet and heavy rare earths, there is substantial proportion, as to substantial potential to uh, be a leader in the development of, of a supply chain for scandium. Why are we doing it? Well, if we look at the, the potential demand for EVs, um, the projected growth is, is an eightfold increase in EV production by the end of this decade alone. That is going to be replicated in what we see with offshore wind. And these are applications where using um, alternative magnets is simply not an option. So the exposure to substantial increasing in pricing for NDPR, but importantly for, for, for Ionic and Makutu, dysprosium and terbium is gonna be absolutely critical for the development of those technologies. We also know that these type of deposits um, are declining. There's not many of these assets available outside of Southern China and Myanmar and the Chinese have actually been depleting their resources themselves. Corporate snapshot, so Ionic, um, we're ASX, list, ASX listed. Uh, we recently just completed a $30 million capital raise, which has been really well supported by global institutions. Um, so we're cashed up now to deliver the feasibility study and also uh, plans on accelerating Makutu towards FID. And um, in addition to that, our, our studies on the refinery and also the incorporation of, of magnet recycling. So the value proposition, um, effectively we've got a fantastic asset with Makutu. It's a very large ionic absorption clay deposit, potentially a 50 year plus asset that can be developed with a low capital modular approach 
that can be funded, the expansion funded from free cash flows generated from the project. Um, it is a, has a very strategic basket and on the back of that, we've had significant interest from um, governments and uh, EV groups globally. Um, we are planning on having a feasibility study completed in October of this year, which will support the mining license application um, that we're looking at having submitted by the end of October and uh, all going well, FID early next year uh, and into, into operations uh, in 2024. On the back of the product, we are looking at this vertically integrated supply chain, being able to refine the mixed rare earth carbonate into the individual rare earth oxides and market those to end users in, in, Western, um, in, in Western locations. Um, we've seen a lot of interest in this um, and we are working on a scoping study which will be completed in the third quarter of this year. And uh, as I mentioned previously, we've recently um, we've moved into the magnet recycling space on the back of an acquisition of a, of a UK um, rare earth refining, separation and refining technology company. And so we will be looking at also progressing the, the magnet recycling opportunity, which has the potential to make up 25% of the, the total magnet rare earth supply chain by the end of this decade. So we do see that as an area that's gonna have substantial growth and uh, provides us with the ability to process um, spent waste materials from the production of magnets into new high efficiency magnets for the future. So just exploring Makutu a little bit further. Um, as I mentioned, we just announced a 70% increase in the resource estimate update. Um, there was a 500% increase in the indicated resource base, um, and that's going to fold straight into our feasibility study, which will be due in October. We own 51% of the Makutu asset. Um, we moved to 60% on the completion of the feasibility study, and we have a preemptive right on the remaining 40%. The basket is, is a very unique product. Um, it has appeals across a number of uh, applications from EVs, renewable energy, communications, military and defence. So we have attracted a lot of interest in getting access to this basket. Um, we've had a lot of interaction with, with a number of groups globally as well. And so as an ionic absorption clay, it is quite a unique asset. It's a high yttrium, um, sorry, medium yttrium, high europium um, classification, which is similar to some of the Chinese assets, but, but very rare to find outside of uh, the Southeast Asia. Um, we have all the infrastructure immediately available at the project site, so we've got access to low-cost hydroelectric power immediately adjacent to the resource area. Um, we've got roads and rail immediately available to the project area and communications across site. And beyond that, the resource that we've announced, we've got substantial exploration to the east and northwest. Um, we're working now through an updated exploration target, which will fold in some of the, the results from a um, a scout drilling program last year, which was hugely successful in delineating um, and confirming uh, a lot of mineralisation out to the east. The resource itself, um, so this image here just shows the, the breakdown of the, the mineralisation corridor where we've drilled to date. Um, effectively, it follows a 37 kilometre long basin. We've used radiometric anomalies to target the location and scout drilling has tested areas in between which has confirmed the continuity of the clay for the full 37 kilometres. We've also identified areas outside of this, um, so we'll be doing some more exploration drilling uh, and scout drilling to, to firm up just how potentially large this resource is. Um, with going downstream, our, our, our focus is really on markets in the EU and the US. And so with China completely dominating the heavy rare earth refining and processing space, we see a great opportunity for a basket that's extremely unique like uh, the Makutu basket to be able to get this directly into those new and emerging supply chains that will be created in Europe and the US. So that's our story and uh, yeah, happy to, to have any questions. Uh, we're at Booth J6 uh, over the next couple of days. Thank you.